and we are going what is going on with everybody it is your boy eric aka young guy coming to you live in the green dungeon giving it to your real raw rugged and have some on the other line i'll let him introduce himself who do we have here today so man, i'm danny g i'm a producer from detroit michigan well i'm not from detroit but where are you from <laughs> i'm from uh, a surrounding area i live i live in Ipsen, maybe. Mm. Uh, how you doing? How you doing today, man? Good, man. Just, man, I'm actually kind of tired. I've been locked in like all weekend and stuff. Just you know, doing sessions, making beats and stuff. I can see it in your face. You you kind of you kind of look tired. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I definitely know. I've been doing nothing but homework and like intense homework. So I know how it is trying to stay up and get it out the way. So but imagine it's a little similar to doing beats. Yeah, man, just, just got to stay locked in somehow, you know? How do you how do you stay, like, how do you not just say, like, F it sometimes? Like, like what keeps you going? Man, um, that's a good question, man. Because I've definitely, I definitely have thought that. Um, man, usually sometimes, man, I just need to, like, it could be like a lot of things like sometimes I just need to take a break and like I mean that could literally just mean like if I was sitting at the computer you know maybe I'm tired like like just like a little burnt out or something and whatever like I'll just literally go for a walk somewhere like just go do just like still live life do something what are what are things that kind of take your mind off of the beat making so like when you go out and do things like walking like what else do you do well I recently just started like skateboarding again a little bit. I used to skate when I was younger and uh, for like years. I mean, I don't really like do it that much because, you know, falling and stuff, like it hurts like even more now. But um, just, yeah, stuff like that. Like, uh, yeah, going for walks, man. I'm trying, I don't know. I'm trying to get back into some hobbies and stuff. Are you a video game guy? Yeah, I, I, I was playing games. I, uh, I haven't been lately, but I was the last game I was playing was a uh, what is that game? Uh, Escape from Tarkov. Mm, what's that? It's like a man. It's like a first person shooter, but like survival game, and it's like super unforgiving. <laughs> it's super hard. Like it's not like Call of Duty. See, I uh, I've definitely. Some people probably know about it though, for sure. I've definitely given up the super duper unforgiving Elden Ring type games. Uh, those games definitely like that's the type of games I'm like. All right, who cares? I'm like F it. Like same words. I'm like, how do you not say F it? I'm like, all right, who cares, bro? <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like, yeah, I just feel like I'm like, damn, this is so much work to like play a game. That like I could literally be putting in work doing some real stuff, so like that's why. I was gonna say yeah, you you stop doing beats that was actual work to do some more video game work. And what's the what's the name of the game? Uh, Escape from Tarkov. Yeah, I've on the PC. Oh, it's on PC. Yeah, I. Uh, it's yeah. a cool game for sure. But, you know. Cause I remember my friend like years ago, he wanted me to buy uh, the Dark Souls game, and I played it, and I was like, yeah, this game. I hate this game. <laughs> I was like, I have is to that, quit. So that's what Elden Ring is. Yeah, Elden Ring is basically, if I'm not mistaken, it's like it's like in the same universe as Dark Souls. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's one I mean, of those. Yeah, games. I see so many people playing it now. Goodness gracious, they must be depressed. It's no way you're playing that game and having fun. It seems like the hardest game. Like I've <laughs> seen people play that game, and I'm like, why are you playing this? <laughs> so it's depressing. It's it's a crazy yeah. thing. Um, do you find yourself like speaking of like I guess like moods and being depressed? Do you find yourself like your moods projecting onto your production at all? Probably. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I feel like my, like, my beat, I mean, I've been kind of like on like the dark sounding stuff for a while, but, uh, I don't know, maybe if I'm like really down or something, like, I'll just probably make something like pretty pretty dark dope fiend fridays that's like that might be a top 100 rap song in my opinion i absolutely love that song and that beat is it sounds like you watch like 
every like Nightmare on Elm Street movie you could, and you was like, oh, I'm gonna go make a beat. <laughs> were you in yeah. a? Were, I guess is that like kind of like one of those dark beats you're talking about? Yeah, I just was like, I just like go through like YouTube and stuff and just find samples, you know. And uh, I don't really remember how I found that sample, um, but I was just like looking. Yeah, I was looking through like some horror stuff. I was looking for something like evil and dark and uh that was definitely one of the samples and i i knew i knew i was like oh this this would be crazy with like rio and mike and uh i i ended up, i texted it to both of them and then uh rio ended up using it but i didn't record it so he that's i didn't even know for a while like he told me like one of the last times i had him at the studio with me he's like i was playing it and he's like, oh, I already did that. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was, I was kind of thinking, like, because him and Mike were pretty much coming up to the studio for a while recording with me and uh, Primo at the Hip Hop Lab. And, uh, and, and him and Mike would just do a lot of songs together and stuff. And I, just, I was just thinking they would hop on it. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, Especially when I seen uh, my boy Spark. Uh, he had like some vlog footage, which is he, it's at the end of the video, the music video, and that's that was like how I knew. He's like, oh yeah, I, I shot a video for that. Yeah. <laughs> no, that song is uh, very very good, and like I, I heard you say that you found that through YouTube, that sample through YouTube. I usually hear like producers, mostly like, older producers, and they they go record shopping and try to find records or whatever. Are you strictly online looking for samples, or do you ever actually like try to go record shopping? I used to do that like early on and that shit is sweet I, I definitely mess with that I think it's cool um I guess I just I haven't been maybe maybe that's something that I should do just to like switch it up because I, I do like I have like a YouTube converter app on my desktop so it's super easy I don't even use the website so I just like find stuff you know and, and just download it because it's, it's, it's simple you know it's easy and like you can find a lot of stuff on the internet fast but um, no, I think that's kind of cool. Like digging for samples, like from little vinyls. I, I really think that's cool. Actually, early on, when I started producing before before even before I started producing, I had a buddy. Uh, his name's Mefta Mefta Beats, um, and he uh, he that's how he made his beats. He had an SP four hundred four. It's like a sampler, like an older sampler, and uh, he had some turntables, like. He DJed and stuff too with the vinyls, but like making beats, like that's what he would do. He would just like get a couple vinyls, find like some drums or something, like just straight from vinyls, samples, and uh, plug it in. So that's that was uh, that was something I, I was thinking I needed to do. But I, I think it's cool though. You can find some cool stuff, and it's a different feeling. Is the best sample you found come from the internet, or did it come from a record shop? I would say at this point the internet, but I do remember finding like some really cool samples like when I when I bought some records. For do, sure. do you ever? But I just wasn't as good at making beats back then. Gotcha, so. gotcha, gotcha. I think you know I didn't think it came out like too good like the mix the mix eye and everything, but but it was fun, man. That was like that was really cool. I was gonna say, have you found like artists that you've liked from like sample like searching like like. Artists you've never heard of before, basically. I have, and then like, there's artists like, or let's say like Whitney Houston or something. Like, I'm just gonna use her as an example, because like I used obviously everybody's heard Whitney Houston. I used to hear it growing up, hear music. My, yeah. my dad played all types of music, like Marvin Gaye and all types of jazz music, all types of stuff, like Whitney Houston, everything. But I, I don't think I had the appreciation for it when I was younger because, like, it was just like, oh, that's dad's music or whatever. And, like, I just remember when I started getting into, like, sampling, like, some of, the, like, the freestyle or 80s stuff, like, for, like, Shitty Boys, finding, like, a lot of that stuff and being like, whoa, this is cool, you know? Especially the freestyle, like, dance hits of, like, the 80s and stuff. You know, I was gonna, I was gonna bring it up because I thought that whole aspect of the shitty boys like when I first discovered them I was like oh they're rapping over like these like 
beats that you would do cocaine to in like 1982 like and it was very <laughs> yeah. interesting to me and i was curious if that was something that you brought to them or did they have the idea they want to rap over those beats or were they already rapping over s- speedy that was, beats? That. that was them that was that. they you know to, to to keep it real bro like i i found them they had already been doing their thing and that's what drew me to them too i'm like whoa this is crazy and and refreshing uh and and yeah so like really like tron's tron Dan D, they've all like really kind of put me on to some samples, like songs that I didn't even know about or whatever. And just even the idea of like digging for that stuff. Like, I never really listened to freestyle. I mean, I've heard there's some some like pretty big freestyle songs, but I, I didn't really listen to that that much, you know, before. So no, that's all right. Uh, did you? Were you already sampling like that '80s type of sound, or did you start doing it after you worked with them? I have, but I didn't even know. I didn't even know that it was called freestyle. For, like, gotcha. Honest. I literally didn't know. I mean, I didn't know it was a genre. So I like I remember like trying to find it. I'd be like '80s sample or something. But there's so much different like '80s music. Yeah. Like it doesn't have the same vibe as like freestyle. Freestyle's just got like a sound to it, you know vibe to it that's cool do, do you have a favorite genre that you like to sample uh, or it just depends I think it's I think it depends man but I do like I do like some of the obscure like you know Russian or like maybe like Korean or Japanese like sound like maybe funk or soul or, or something like that just super obscure you know in another language like I think some of that stuff sounds really cool no for sure shout out to uh, I mean like I feel like Alchemist and Mad Lib are good for like things where they're like pulling out just random Japanese Blasian jazz samples and it's like oh, what is this this is insane so that's always cool hey low key like the Japanese and Koreans like they uh, they've got some cool music man like like their versions of like you know, they probably were inspired by, you know, African-American, like, uh, blues and stuff, yeah. like, back in, you know, in the day, and, and funk and stuff, but they just have their own, like, twist to it, like, and it just sounds, like, different, but it's sick. Asian art in general, specifically, like, the Japanese era, I mean, area, the Korean area, they uh they, just, they have some very interesting stuff from their music to their movies. I love like things like Parasite. Uh, what else? Their video games like Yakuza. Like they just have some very oh, yeah. interesting stuff. So yeah, it's cool because I feel like there's like this element of them like appropriating like American culture. Mm. You know, whatever it may be, like whatever like part of America. You know. But like, 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 like I used to like the Resident Evil games and stuff, like, and that that shit just was cool. Like the music, like everything to me. Like I like all that stuff. No, for sure. Like I said, that's definitely a very like, just cool. It's a cool like a uh, culture. I'm I'm very big into like just trying to learn about like more cultures. There's a, I I think you should I should put you on this. There's like a there's like an Indonesian there's like an Indonesian, psych like rock like psychedelic era in like the 60s and 70s a lot of things you could sample i'll definitely uh shoot some stuff your way that i feel like you might like but it's some just crazy stuff from like the 60s in indonesia that i came across on accident i'm like this is very insane so yeah have you like what would you say is like the craziest genre subgenre you came across just by sample digging you was like i didn't even know this existed man uh Man, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, damn, I don't really know. <laughs> uh, I do like, I don't know, man. I just like, I, I'll, if it's if it sounds cool, like, you know, I'll listen to it. I definitely, uh, I feel like I need to listen to more music. Like mm. sometimes I'm caught up in the, in the beats and stuff too, and just like doing this stuff that I like don't always get a chance to like listen as much. But yeah, no, I think I think 
I think that's also another way to like I'll do that I'll listen to music just random stuff like for inspiration for sure you know who's uh I don't know if you know his rapper or not but he'll plot a cool sample here and there uh when he produces one of his tracks you heard of DJ Lucas nah yeah. DJ Lucas is a he's he's like a white rapper from like upstate New York and very 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 interesting rapper I'll see you some of his stuff too I think you I think you'll enjoy him but um yeah, I'm I'm always I'm always here for some interesting sample choices or whatnot. And even when it's not like a clear vocal sample or whatever, your beats are really, really cool. You know what I'm saying? Like I, like your beats have like a I feel like they used to have a distinct sound for me, but like you said, recently you've been going into much more of a darker tone where I was like, Oh, that's one of your that's a Danny G beat. I I would have never guessed that. If in, until Baby Tron told me right before the song started, I would have never known that was a, a Danny G beat. So I think that's cool. Do you think as you evolving as a producer, or you just switching things up? Like how would you how would you characterize like, that? I feel like that's I feel like that's that. I mean, maybe I think you know as a producer, if you're working on your craft, you know you're always going to evolve. But um, maybe that's just like the bag that I'm in right now. Which I've been trying to like do some other stuff too, like uh, like some industry stuff. Like I'm trying to do that. I need to do that more. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like maybe that's just like a phase for now <laughs> for me. Are there any rappers industry wise that you haven't worked with that's not from Michigan that doesn't, I guess, fit the mold of what people would think you would make a beat for? So like not like somebody like a Rio or a Ray or somebody like that, but somebody that would rap over different type of beats that we're used to hearing you produce that you probably want to work with? Yeet. Yeet. Mm. Yeah, I, I want to work with Yeet. Uh, man, I always wanted to work with like YSL, like Young Thug, Ghana, Lil' Keed. Well, he passed away, didn't he? Yeah. Like last week, yeah. Damn, that sucks. For real, okay. I got some friends, you know, producer friends that uh, have produced for Key and Gunna and stuff. You know, I got some songs with Key, but yeah, um, who else, man? Man, I low key would want to work with like Justin Bieber, like mm. really whoever. I'd want to do some shit like that, but I've never made any pop beats. So. I was gonna say, like, what would that sound like, you and Justin Bieber? It would probably be like some like rap shit or something. Yeah, you you would you would still have to put the the baby trying. Ooh, shit, that's a Danny GB over the Justin Bieber song, which would be insane to hear. Um, uh, what would a Yeats beat sound like from you? Well, I got some. I got some of that stuff. Me and uh, Jake Sand, um, we've done some collabs and stuff. Uh, and we made some pretty hard uh, like rage rage beats. It probably be like it probably fit fit the mold of like sort of like Yeet, you know. No, I, I don't know. I mean, he's got some stuff that sounds kind of dark, so I feel like that would be cool. Hey, no, I think I've been for like the past week. I've been like playing Get Busy at least thirty times a day. So <laughs> I would definitely. No, I know. Like the last two weeks for me, I've been really listening to him. Yeah, he's he's, uh, he's interesting. Um, but no, I hope, I hope that comes together. That would be that would be interesting because, like I said, I'm I was already kind of thrown off the way you switch from one sound to another. I'm definitely curious to see like how you can you know work with other artists that I wouldn't expect you to work with. Like like Yeet. like I can't even imagine what that would sound like. But I'm interested now. Like you and Yeet. So. Yeah. Um, cool. I feel like. I feel like I really just need to, like, get in, like, other bags. But at the same time, too, like, a lot of people are looking at the Detroit sound, the Michigan sound, and sort of wanting to do stuff on that, you know? So you never really know. Well, that's... I, I recorded a song for Bezo in Spot em, Got em, and it was on, like, a Detroit, like, Bezo-type beat, you know? And then he's got a few songs that are on those type of beats, like, Detroit like Bezo stuff so I'm like oh shit like well before I was about to say what I was um what I was gonna say a couple <laughs> seconds ago I do want to comment on that because like, like we were talking about off camera I'm from Jacksonville so 
uh, Spot got it from Jacksonville. Um, Florida loves those type of beats. And it's a reason why. Because in Florida, we our music is fast. Everything is fast. So if you go back to the Uncle Luke days and all of that, like it was a whole bunch of booty shaking music. That's really what we were making back in the 90s, a whole bunch of booty shaking music. And Trick Daddy, Trina, like all that music is fast. And we also... Don't know if you know this, but like you know how in uh, Texas they they chop and screw their music, they slow it down. We do the exact opposite in Florida. We speed our music up. So we'll, yeah. we'll take a Playboy Cardi song, Yamin, and we'll speed up BPM a little bit or whatever, and make it really really fast. And that's I feel like why we like your guys' beats because it has like a a groovy nature to it. You know what I'm saying? And it fits the 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 speed and the sound. So when I heard a whole bunch of Florida rappers from just you name it, rapping over Detroit and Michigan beats. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. We already rap over similar type of beats, so it makes sense. Yeah, you know, to me, like, I, I wasn't really, like, hip to that because I, I, I remember, like, here, like, just seeing, like, just fans, like, from, like, Miami or from whatever, and I was just kind of like, whoa, like, that's crazy, like, that, you know, you know, a place like Florida or something, like, really rocks with, like, our sound, you know? Like, I thought that was really cool. I got a cousin that lives in Florida. He lives in Orlando. Um, but I remember showing him some, uh, I, I was, I showed him, like, Doughboy's Cash Out, like, years ago. And sent him, like, the mixtapes, you know, like, from when, uh, the Dat Piff era. Yeah. You know, I could just send him a bunch of stuff. And, like, he was telling me that they were playing that stuff all the time. Bro, baby. <clears throat> I mean, a while ago, that was, that was before Detroit was really. Yeah. Or anything, but. Bro, Babyface Ray might be the number one rapper in Jacksonville, Florida, right now. People absolutely love Babyface Ray, and he lives nowhere near Jacksonville, Florida. So <laughs> it just shows you, like, how, just in general, too, like, the way Detroiters kind of move and operate is similar to Floridians a little bit for me. From what I've seen and when I've interacted with them and just looking at interviews, it's very similar. So, yeah, the culture of music and just the culture in general of Detroit and Florida seem pretty similar even though the weather seems pretty polar opposite because you guys are cold snowing and we're like dying in yeah. the heat right now you know what? Michigan's really cool man because we have we have the winter I feel like the winters are like way too long but you know we got like a, a, like the, the we got spring and it's it's like to me that's one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite seasons here because like when it just starts getting like warm and then like the, the trees are starting to bloom and it's just like you just said you're like oh hell yeah it's about to be a lit summer like it's super nice and then summer is like like I said it can get like kind of muggy and like hot or whatever but like we have pretty nice summers like there's lakes everywhere like you know if you're into like boating or whatever just like all that stuff you know? and then uh I mean, the fall is, like, kind of cool, too. I just hate the winters here. See, but it is cool that we get to have, like, four seasons, you know? We only have two. It's literally just winter and summer. And the winter, it's like a fake winter because I could, wear, I could take my shirt off and walk around the city on, on Christmas. And I don't think you could do that in most places because it's probably going to be really cold on Christmas. You know what's crazy, though? When I was down there, like, in the winter... Like, cause it does kind of get cold. It'll, it could get like fifty degrees yeah. or something, you know. And like, I was wearing shorts. And like, everybody's like, "Oh yeah, you're from out of town for sure." Cause like, you're definitely from like up north or something. Cause like, it was like it was warm to me. But like after like a while of being there, I I for sure like got used to it, and that was really cold. No, 50 it, degrees, I'm like what the hell? I need a jacket. Fifty degrees to me is like. It's scary. It's like fifty degrees. You know, that's probably how y'all think about like <laughs> sub temperatures. Like I'm like fifty. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta wear a bubble coat. You know, so it's like that's another thing about Detroit that's cool. <clears throat> I sometimes wish I could dress for the winter. Like I, I kind of like to wear layers and big coats. And I can't do that here. You know, like are you in like when is winter time? Yeah, are you like into that? I like, I like, I like the like if you have like a really sweet ass like winter jacket or something. Like, that shit's cool. I almost made the dumbest purchase last year. I was gonna, I was looking at um, it's a Chief Keef video. I think it's, I think it's called, uh, I think it's Hood, and shouts to the water. Uh, I think it's Hood, and um, 
he had on his green Montclair jacket. And I was it was it was quite a penny. And I was like, you know what? Let me let me spoil myself and buy this. And I thought about it and I said, I'm gonna wear this one or t- one or two times and never gonna be able to wear it again because it's never gonna be that cold. So I wish I could. It'll never be that so. cold and then like the next time when you wanna wear it, it's gonna be out of style. <laughs> exactly. So it was like, yeah. Because you know, like I remember there was like a period of time where like North Face jackets were like that was like the shit, and then it was like Canada Goose or something, I think, and then like now it's like the Montclair. So like, I think it changes, you know. Like I remember yeah. True Religion were like really cool. Like when I was coming up, I, I remember just like like just stacking up like True. It was like I was like hell yeah. Like I had like a whole thing full of True. <laughs> All I wore. <clears throat> Man, Chief Keef really like changed a generation's like fashion sense. Like, I always say, like, I didn't see normal people that wasn't, like, famous rappers or anything trying to, like, buy designer belts until, like, that whole drill era was happening. He was wearing belts on his head and stuff. It was, like, I didn't see people doing that until Chief Keef. So, shout out Chief Keef. You definitely changed the fashion sense for a whole generation. Yeah, Chief Keef is pretty late, man. Do you have an, do, would you have an idea of a beat you would want to make for, for Keef? Do you know what you would give him? I would probably, I would, I would probably try to find something like in the middle of like, like a like a Chief Keef type beat and like a Detroit beat, like mm. something maybe like, maybe like like Vezo tempo, like I swear Vezo tempo, like, but not too slow. Definitely like somewhere in the middle. Now that'd be hard. He's like, I mean, I'm sure, he could rap on like something fast, you know. Maybe. You know how that artist though too, like you. You make stuff for them, and like you just think, oh yeah, they're gonna like this, and then you, you're like, nah, nah, play something else, and then you play like the thing that you, like some random like beat that like you weren't even gonna play them because you're like, oh no, he ain't gonna rap on that. What's the like, song that happened to you? A lot with like Tron. Tron. Where I'll be like, I'll make some beats for him, and like he for sure would sound good on that, and, like. And uh, I was thinking like, oh yeah, he's gonna like this. And, I like made a whole pack for him that he ends up using like another beat. <clears throat> nah, that's I've definitely heard that a lot with producers where they're like, Oh, he's gonna kill this beat and they're like, Ah, eh, I don't really like the beat and they pick like a beat that you wouldn't even think they would rap over and it's like, You want this beat? And it ends up sounding good from from what I hear a lot of times it's like, Oh, that did sound good. Yeah, I don't know if you heard uh The Office. Uh have I heard the that Office? Was on, uh, what was that on that was on like Steve Nash or I don't remember which album that was on. It was like a couple albums ago. Let me see. The Office, Baby Tron. What album was that? Ah, so Luca Tronchi. Yes, yes, yes. Luca yes, 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 yep, yes, yes, yes. Luca Tronchi. Yeah, okay, yeah. That beat, like, that's, I produced that. That's like a, that beat tag, bro. Like, I've only used that beat tag, like, two times. It's like one of my boys. So I was like, I need, I need a new tag. He made that. Uh, so you wouldn't even know that it, you probably wouldn't even know that it was me that made the beat and I made it like probably like six months before I even met Tron and then like a whole like year at least before he used it I sent it to him like to his email like when I like first started locking in with him I played it for him I was like nah nah and then like I don't know what inspired them to want to do that but like Lando's like oh I need I, I need I need an office beat or whatever I'm like I already did that shit <laughs> so they were like alright so you never know too like sometimes it's just like the artist move yeah at the time like they might not really like it he's he's catching his stride right now too Tron like he is like like I was a Tron fan since I first heard him I interviewed them in I think late 2020 maybe like December I interviewed like the whole city boys and I just did not expect this to happen like I didn't expect not saying I didn't think he had it in him but just to see this rise that he's having right now I'm happy for him it's 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 a beautiful thing to see I feel this I feel the same way because you know I, I always believe like I, I always knew they like and them as a group was special and I, I knew that Tron was special like um, you, I just knew, you know, like 
maybe some people might not think so, but I, I just knew it. And then you work with him, and you and you really see like the work ethic, and you see like who he is as a person, like not just from watching his music videos, but like literally that. And then you know, you you just know. But at the same time, like just being locked in with him, like seeing the progression and then like sometimes you don't realize it while you're in the middle of it because you're just you're working you yeah. know and you, you don't realize it and you're not like you're not like so fixated on like oh yeah Tron's about to blow up this year or that or whatever and then it just starts happening it's just it's super sick man it's, it's definitely sick I'm, I'm happy to have been along the way on the journey like and, and just working with them like it's just dope you know well, no, I mean I was about to say congrats, congrats to you too you're making the soundtrack. Hell yeah, yeah! I appreciate it, man. Like it's 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 a he he's he raps on a lot of people's beats, you know. But he does have like some select producers, you know, like Okati Y, Blue Strip, Mark uh, Mark Anthony. He's at the Hip Hop Lab with us. Uh, Ayo Marque, right here is Tag. <clears throat> um, Getta Beats, Jake Sand. I don't know if I said Jake already, but you know. I don't want to forget anybody else. He, I mean, even he energy. loves to rap over Mark Boomin, uh, Energy too. Yeah, Mark Boomin. Uh, he was, he was, he's, he's got some shit with Mark Boomin, like so. It's so like there's like a good like handful of like regulars, you know. So which is cool, you know, because we're all kind of like working on the sound and and it's evolving and it's just bouncing around, you know. So that's, that's cool, and I and I pretty much have working relationships with. All those guys, you know, so that's what's cool, too, just locking in with everybody, you know, Geta, Jake Sand, Bukati Y, even JK Beats, that, that's who he was rapping on early, on his beats early on, you, you've heard him. Yeah. For sure. Um, I just locked in with him, like, while we were on tour, and, like, I just had him send me some stuff. And that's that's when I first started listening to Tron. That's who, that's pretty much what he was rapping on. Was like J.K. Beats, uh, Helva. Oh yeah, Helva. Yeah, Helva. Uh, he's just a Detroit legend. He's just so fire. You see, I feel like Helva is one of the persons or one of the people that kind of reminded me, like, oh, this does make sense for like Michigan rappers to rap over, or Florida rappers to rap over Michigan beats because he was producing a lot for Kodak. And, co- and some of those Kodak songs were my favorite songs at the time. So, like, uh, like, like when a vulture cried, just other songs that he produced. And I was just like, oh, he does sound really good over those beats. So, yeah, Hell of It is a absolute legend. Hilarious guy, too. Shout out to Hell of It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember, like, yeah, he was pretty funny. Like, the first time I met him, he was like, he didn't know who I was or whatever. And he was just, like, like busting my balls, like, because he, like, couldn't, like, figure out the interface, like, with the, mo- the studio monitors, and then he's like, are you, like, an intern or something? <laughs> fix this for me or something? And I'm like, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to do this, you know, he just turned to, but definitely a legendary dude, man. You know, shout out to hell, but I, I, I interviewed him a couple years ago, uh, like, in the middle of COVID, and, like, I think, like, we spent 10 minutes on him saying, uh, He's trying to really figure out if COVID is real. So he was licking on every doorknob in the city to see if he can catch it. And he said he was going to be like a human test experiment. I was like, yeah, this guy's electric. <laughs> this guy is absolutely electric. So yeah, shout I out to him. The, I caught that shit. You, how was it? It was pretty bad, but, you know, I, I, dude, I didn't get it, like, from, like, the time that it was, like, the pandemic really started. Like, I didn't get it until, like, a few months ago. Mm. I mean, as far as I know, I, I hadn't been sick since, like, 2019. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, pretty, it was pretty miserable, but, like, I don't know. I've been pretty sick before, so. Did you like... you lose your taste and smell? You still have it? Or you get it back, or? Yeah, no, I got it. Gotcha, gotcha. I was just talking I about. Heard, I heard some people, like, never got it back. Or yeah. Something. That's weird. I would lose my mind. Yeah. Cause that's what we have, bro. That's 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 what we have. We have our senses. That's crazy. Part of the human experience, man. Imagine just not being able to smell or taste. I will lose my mind. I was just telling somebody about this video that I seen where 
this girl was like crying because she can't smell her taste but not only can she like not smell the taste when she eats she said everything tastes like garbage so she like throws it up and now she has like an eating disorder where she really can't like hold food down because it tastes like sewer and i was like oh my god i would I might jump off a bridge at that point. It's like I don't even know what I would do because it's like, like you said, yeah, you can't food, live with food. Food is like, you know, food is like, it's a, it's an essential for to live, you know. But like, it's also like a pleasure, like a good thing, you know. Like, I mean, you can eat anything for sustenance, but like, you know, that's why we cook and we have dishes and cul- different cultures have different foods and and different ingredients that just taste different you know and just like there's just so much to explore in the world in that regard you know and that would just suck for sure I could be wrong <laughs> but you strike me as a guy who like uh, like outside of music like I feel like you watch like just random stuff on YouTube and you, you watch like different type of just like documentaries I could be wrong but you strike me as a guy who like interested in things like oh that. yeah I like documentaries what's the last I'm documentary you watched show you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I, I started watching, uh, like, I've watched, like, American Horror Story and stuff, and, like, I watched some of the Squid Game stuff, but, which is cool, but, like, I just like learning about real stuff. Like, I was real, I used to like Vice a lot. I watched, I watch it sometimes. But I watch, I used to watch it a lot. What's some, uh, like, if, if you go to, like, your YouTube history outside of the music stuff, like, what are things you're watching on YouTube? Uh, alright, so I watch, I watch a lot of stuff, like, man, let me, I don't have to just look for you. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube has endless amounts of just insane things on there. Uh, alright, yeah, so right now I'm looking at, oh no, that's the wrong YouTube account. Here we go. Just look through my history. <clears throat> oh yeah, a lot of like, a lot of like no jumper. Uh, I watch. Uh, what's? What is up, everyone? What's this dude? Uh, I forget his name. He's like, he kind of does like the Joe Rogan like style podcast, like long form, but he's like. Uh, he like interviews like oh yeah Lex Friedman ah yes he he yeah, pops up on my recommendation every single day and I've never clicked on it but he pops up every single day should I watch he him interviews yeah for sure like he interviews like like I haven't watched Joe Rogan in a while I used to watch it and and you know I, I think his stuff's pretty cool um but like like some of like the nerdy stuff you know like I'm into like uh crypto and like mining and stuff like he interviewed Vitalik Buterin he's like the founder of Ethereum and I watched that you know like it's just like he interviews like all these like big tech guys and stuff and it's definitely pretty interesting like stuff like it's probably boring to like some people but no he interviewed because I was on his page yesterday actually because he interviewed this one psychologist that has like a podcast I forget the dude name but he just interviewed him like a couple uh, maybe weeks ago or maybe a month or two ago and uh mm-hmm. yeah I was I might I might have to give him a check out just just because he interviewed bro. Sam Hyde, I used to watch Sam Hyde a lot. Sam Hyde, uh, I used to watch H three H three a lot too. Shout out to uh, one of my one of my friends works for H three. I'm not. Oh really? Yeah, a guy uh, guy named Ian. Shout out to Ian. That's sick. I'm, I'm not like a huge fan of the podcast anymore. Like I really liked his content when he was like. Uh, when he was doing like the reaction videos but um yeah I don't know I kind of lost interest in his like podcast but yeah I just thought he was funny I'm looking at I'm looking here like a lot of yeet <laughs> <laughs> producer grind podcast I listen to that have you been on there They I feel like they've interviewed every producer Mm-mm. They, no. got, they got to reach out to you yeah, if they do, man, I'm definitely down, bro. But, uh, yeah, they have a lot, a lot of, like, really, really dope dudes on there. Like, I was just watching the Turbo, um, <clears throat> Run It Back Turbo uh, interview on their podcast. 
he's just dropping a lot of knowledge like <coughs> even stuff that you know like there's a lot of stuff that I need to learn from you know I'm like I'm in this music stuff but there's like levels to it you know what I'm yeah. saying you know that's a dude that's like a, on a way higher level than me so it's, it's always cool to watch it like that Shout out to Turbo. He was a part of that legendary, kind of like early thug run when he was getting all this stuff leaked and barter six days. And all that. that was classic yeah. era. Classic era. Gonna. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sounds like you're a pretty cultured, well rounded man on YouTube. Oh, yeah. There's me looking. Shit, going for him. Shit, I've seen it. Shout out to YouTube. Like, I have ADHD, so I was just looking up a bunch of ADHD stuff. Now it's in my, uh, recommended. Hey, you type in one thing on YouTube, and it will start recommending. Like, you're just like, hey, how do I fix a toilet? And then you're, like, getting toilet recommendations and all sometimes, type of crazy stuff. Sometimes that's annoying. Like, it is. Nice. No, it <laughs> is. Because you're like, damn, like, I just wanted to watch a couple videos. I already took care of it. I learned what I needed to learn. It's not really my thing. <laughs> and then it's just a bunch of videos. Okay. I definitely try to avoid watching anything politics um, on YouTube because it'll just recommend like all that shit. No, for sure. I've definitely watched like a video just out of curiosity, and then the YouTube algorithm thinks like, "Oh, you're gonna like," it. and like, "No, I don't want to see the rest of this. I just just want to see one thing about this." So yeah, you are. Yeah, because like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with like politics or anything well there's a lot wrong with politics but yeah <laughs> but like it's like it's depressing if you if, if I feel like if, if you watch too much of that stuff it's so depressing so I just don't even really mess with it no I can definitely feel that um also definitely don't want to uh definitely don't want to keep too much of your time here so um I appreciate you sliding through man I appreciate you reading your YouTube history list with us that was pretty cool um but yeah man if there's any last words you have to say for the people watching please let me know man shout out to Detroit Michigan music man uh Shitty Boys Lando Bando Primo Beats Jake Sam Ghetto Beats all the guys if you're a producer, man, just keep working. If you're trying to trying to get placements, just just stay locked in. Just keep working on your craft and, and networking, and uh, a lot of like cool shit's gonna happen. Hey, and then, to you, bro, what, what's your what's your podcast, man? Uh, I'm just Eric Eric the Young God on YouTube. You know, Eric the Young God. Eric the Young God on YouTube, man. So, okay. yeah, man. Appreciate uh, appreciate you sliding through. Appreciate you sliding through. Appreciate everybody for watching. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters are going to hate. Players are going to play. And you guys.